Greetings and salutations, Mega Wizard 79 here with another episode of Skyrim, Krutz the Barbarian Enchanter Edition. Uh, so as you can see, um, a few things have changed. Um, first of all, I have uh, elevated Krutz here to not only be able to smith ebony, but he can smith elven as well as advanced armors. Um, I just figured, I guess for the first time, uh, I might as well just do this entire tree. Um, I usually just pick one side, which is this side over here. Um, but since I will be having like a few companions with me, and some of these companions will be using more lighter armors than me, I figured I may as well, you know, suit them up with uh, better stuff. I can't wait till I get here. Hoo hoo hoo. But yeah, as you can see, Celine is also decked out. I gave her the entire Falmer set that you got off that schmuck we killed in the last, uh, well, the episode after the last one. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, as you can see, like, I also enchanted, if I recall, I think I enchanted. This better not be all the things you just can't be bothered with. Yes, I did. I enchanted it. So as you can see, I uh, gave uh, I gave it to the um, <laughs> I gave it a dis the destruction and magic um, mm, <clears throat> sorry regeneration enchantment. Uh, her one-handed skills are now a little bit better. She has a uh, five percent more resistance to uh, fire because the last pair of boots only had forty percent. Um, this helmet is basically the same. All I did was just upgrade it. Um, I also gave her this ring, and yeah, everything else about her kit is the same. Um, as far as Krutz here, as you can see, he's decked out in an entire ebony set. Um, he also has a uh, ebony warhammer. Uh, he also has an ebony helm, which I will be wearing. Um, I decided to just give it the ability to breathe underwater, because honestly, helmets, they really don't have the, the best choices when it comes to enchantments. Don't know why. Um, so his two-handed fighting skills are now better. He now has even more resistance to ice. Uh, he also has even more health. Uh, I also get... Um, uh, this enchantment also really kind of just... <laughs> so... My enchantments are literally a hundred times, a uh, hundred percent better now, and the most, even with a grand soul gem, is 19% magic resistance. That's kind of harsh, uh, considering that this one here that I got off Harkin only gives me 17%, so I only got a 2% increase? Man, that's, that's rough. Uh, but yeah, uh, for the most part, uh, everything's the same, um... What is it? I decided I'd mix things up a little bit with this uh, Warhammer. Also, it hits much, much harder than uh, my Great Sword of Jigalai, but don't worry. This will be coming back. Um, you know, I, I did create this character specifically to wield this weapon. I'm just waiting till I get uh, this perk here. So that I can put two enchantments on it. Um, I will also be doing it the same thing to my armor and stuff. Um, so, you know, so I'll still be wearing the same armor. I'll just, you know, <laughs> make a new set. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much everything that's changed between uh, episodes, uh, apart from the fact also of just selling everything in here for the most part, and everything that I didn't sell is all nice and sorted away in my house. Seriously, that took me like two hours, by the way. <laughs> but as you can see, I'm even more wealthy. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So for today's episode, we have a few places we're going to be going to. Uh, we're going to be starting up here in the College of Winterhold. Because uh, uh, remember those uh, books that I found in the uh, fall, uh, sorry, in the uh, Pale Veil? I think that's what it's called, or is it the forgot? Oh, sorry, the Forgotten Veil. Vale? Yeah, those uh, Falmer tomes. Yeah, I forgot. You take it to uh, <laughs> when you find them. You take them to you, you take it to the orc here, and he uh, if he and once you get enough of them, he actually transcribes them all and makes a uh, uh, makes a completed book for you. So it's not the pal. Sorry, it's not the paladin guy who does it for you. It's the orc here, which makes sense actually. When you think about it, mm, it's okay. A secret that the college's reputation in Skyrim is tainted. 
Uh, you don't say. Well, so if you ask me, I think the Nords need to get off their damn high horse. Whoops. Uh, I just like taking off my helmet when I'm talking to people. <laughs> it's more of a role-playing thing, if anything else. I don't want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Are we clear? Of course not. Hundreds of years have gone into assembling this collection. It's going to stay pristine, understand? <laughs> well, well. I haven't seen one of these beauties in a long time. A rare find in the original Thalmer language. You're damn right I'm interested. Question is, are you selling? Well, considering no one else in Skyrim would buy something they couldn't possibly read, I'd say you don't have much of a choice. Tell you what, you bring me books like this, and I'll pay a thousand gold each. I'll even throw in a translated edition I have for free. Interested? Here you go. Mm, there we go. You need a book? You talk to me. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a lot of pain. Hmm. Anyway, but yeah. So, that's how you get the, uh... The translated versions. The Betrayed, Touching the Sky... So, yeah. Um, I don't know how many volumes there are. I think it's like... S probably maybe ten or something. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that takes care of that. So the next place we'll be going to... I'll get that out of there, because I don't have any more... Well, I mean, I'll just keep it on here. But I don't have any more books to give them. Uh, ah, right. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is this. Uh, I need a lot of space to do this. Uh, let's see. I hope I can summon him out here. Let's see. Oh. Nope, doesn't work here. Uh, I guess I gotta do it somewhere completely open. Uh, let's head here. This is completely vacant, not a soul for miles. Seriously, he's very finicky to where he's summoned. Alright, let's try here. Specifically over there. Hmm. Alright, let's try here. God damn it. <sighs> okay. Let's go to the ground then. Maybe it's just because he doesn't like being up here. Seriously, the guy is very finicky of where he teleports to. So freaking help me. Uh, I don't have time for this. Go away. Alright, how about here? There we go. Teach you the first word of soul tearing. Re the essence of your so soul. Right out here. My spirit. Hey, now I have to wait for a really well, maybe. Maybe after one or two teleports, it'll probably go away. But yeah, he's just massive. I mean, just look at him. Anyway, but yeah, so now we gained a new word. There we go. Alright, so... Uh... I don't really think we need to stay here and watch him. He's going to disappear after a while, if I recall. He's very majestic for a putrid uh, slime ball, if you ask me. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, so the next place we're going to go to is here. Um, we'll be doing that, uh... Again, it's a really easy quest. He's just really, really finicky on where he's summoned. Alright. Uh, you know what? Let's, uh... Let's wait a little while. I just like it to be morning. There we go. Now, there's another quest we can do here. Uh, that deals with that tower up there, but we'll do that another time. Maybe after we finish this quest. Again, this quest is not hard by any means. Hmm? All right. Yeah, so that's one of the boys that you can, um... <clears throat> that you can, uh, adopt... Poor kid. <sighs> but the thing is, though, is like... <sighs> okay, so... Here's one of the issues I kind of have with the um, adoption thing altogether. Uh, I'm just doing this so no one interrupts me. Um, so, one of the issues I have is, well... You know, for all intents and purposes, you... You know, you can only adopt two kids, which is fine. That's okay. My issue is, is that... They make the girl... Orphans so much more pitiable and you just want to adopt them so you get them off the streets because you have one that's literally begging in um in White Run, you know. She's she's just literally outside n nobody nobody to help her or anything, that sort of thing. Well, with the exception of like some of the beggars, like the, I think it's the town dr you know, that one beggar that's always uh, bumming you for like uh, to get mead for him. Yeah, I think he's the one that showed her, you know, showed her how to like um, How to uh, beg but still it's like what the hell and then the other one who's all the way in Windhelm like <sighs> She literally goes out in the freezing cold to find flowers to sell so that she can get some room and board you know, for a night or so, you know, at the very least to get some food. I'm just like, oh my god. Like, you know, at least the kids in the orphanage? Yeah. Grelog was an absolute tyrant. But we took care of that. And now the and now and now Constance, you know, basically has full run of the place, so the kids are much better off. They're you know, they've always had a place to they've always had a warm bed, something to eat, a, a roof over their heads, you know, so they were always fine. Now was, you know, like, you know, Grelog notwithstanding. You know, and th so obviously you would want to go for probably the kids who are out on the street and have no family, no orphanage, no nothing. Um, you know, it's just the girls are so much more pitiable because they literally have nobody. Yes, the two boys, they're being worked like horses, but at least they do have somewhere to stay is it great no but uh, <laughs> this is why i just <laughs> like i uh, but yeah but that but that's the reason why i just like i always go for the girls before i go for before i ever think about the guys because yes the kid the the boy kids are in terrible situation also but they're infinitely better off like it's just, it's not even comparable, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate the fact that, like, it's just, the choice is so obvious, black and white, it's really not fair. Your ancestors wouldn't want this, Silas. Why should I hide from it? This is my family's legacy. It's the past. Dead oaths on dead lips. Let it stay there. The museum is opening, Medina.
I beg you, don't go into Silas's museum. Silas comes from one of the oldest families in Dawnstar. They have a complicated history. Several of his ancestors belong to the mythic Dawn, the cult that almost destroyed Tamriel. His family's involvement was only found out well after the crisis had died down, but it still ruined their reputation. They were outcasts. And now Silas is back, and this museum to the mythic Dawn is his way of trying to rebuild his family's pride. It's misguided. Hmm. Not a student of history, I see. It's for the best. They're a group that should be forgotten. The only thing you need to know is that they almost destroyed the world, and they were stopped a long time ago. That museum is a mistake. Huh. <laughs> and here comes my first visitor. The Museum of the Mythic Dawn is open, friend. And here you are. Good. Come in. Browse the display and let's talk. I have a job you look perfect for. Let's talk inside. Okie doke. Now I'm really hoping Serana does not talk in here. Feel free to look around. Come talk to me when you're ready to discuss that job I mentioned. Okay, so, um, so he, basically, the uh, tapestries hung here and outside were found in hideouts where members of the Mythic Dawn would meet and plot. The cult's greatest accomplishment was the assassination of the Septim Dynasty and the opening of the Oblivion Gates. So yeah, so when you look at something, he'll basically give you a little uh, footnote on the significance behind it. Um, that's why I was mostly looking at the floor, trying to avoid that. Uh, but I guess the, uh, I guess if you so much as even glance at the tapestries, he just talks about them. But fortunately, Serata's being a good girl and keeping her mouth shut. All right, so let's look at this next. Those robes were worn during the Mythic Dawn secret meetings where they plotted to bring the Daedra Mehrunes Dagon into Tamriel. Each bolt of yarn used to make the robe was colored with a dye made from sacrificial blood. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, that one we'll save for last. That burned paper is all that remains of the fabled Mysterium Xarxes, the blasphemous book written by Mehrunes Dagon himself. It's said that Mankar Cameron used the book to open a portal to a paradise where all his followers would live forever. Mm-hmm. That he did. Hmm. I can't tell if he's an Imperial. You know, it's funny. At first, I thought he was a Dark Elf when I came here, but it's like, nah, that wouldn't make any sense because, well, for one, he doesn't have red eyes, and two, uh, why would... A dark elf be one of the oldest living families in Dawnstar of all places. Come on. Um, so, yeah. Like, nah, he doesn't look like a Nord. He's too... Yeah, I swear. You see, this is one of the things that I'm kind of disappointed that they took away. So, you see, in Morrowind and I think also Oblivion, um, the, uh, the different races, they actually had, like, some... They actually had, like, unique characteristics that, you know, could make them identifiable, specifically more the humans, uh, you know, so you could tell them apart. <laughs> um, the Nords, for example, were taller than pretty much every other race, with the exception of the Altmer. The Altmer and the Nords can kind of look at each other eye to eye. They were that huge. Uh, the Altmer, obviously, they, they had that golden skin, so you didn't necessarily need their incredible height to notice, but yeah. But, yeah, the only way you could tell the difference between a Nord and an Imperial is that a Nord towered over every other human. Um, Imperials and Bretons were a little bit tricky just because of the fact that they were kind of at... Uh, they, they were basically about the same height, but I think Bretons were slightly shorter. Um, but yeah, it's just like... Uh, it, I kind of feel disappointed that they took that away from most of the... Um, from the human races, at least. You know, like, the, the elf races, you can still tell them apart. They're super identifiable. Humans? Tch, good luck with that. The commentaries on the Mysterium Xarxes were written by the Mythic Dawn cult leader, Mankar Cameron. 
He promised a paradise awaited his followers when they died. That they would be reborn by Merun Stagon's side. And now for the Pace de Resistance. Ah, yes. That scabbard. Notice the insignia? An Oblivion Gate. A key symbol of Merun's Dagon, the patron Daedra of the Mythic Dawn. Did you have any questions about the museum? Or would you rather talk business? They were worshippers of Merun's Dagon, the Daedric Lord of Destruction and Change. The mythic dawn killed Uriel Septim the Seventh and his heirs, triggering the events that led to the Oblivion Crisis when the Daedra invaded Tamriel. All that remains of the infamous cult I've gathered in my museum. Ah, an excellent question. Merun's Dagon is the Daedric Lord of Change, Destruction, and Ambition. Dagon's mythic dawn cult killed the Septim Dynasty and opened the Oblivion Gates into Tamriel. They called it the Oblivion Crisis. It's no secret that my family were once members of the Mythic Dawn. One of my forefathers was even chosen to assassinate Uriel Septim himself. We hid from our past for years, became tradesmen, people of coin and influence. But I realized that the Mythic Dawn's importance, our importance, to history cannot be denied. I'll see everyone in Tamriel remember that for a moment, we held the fate of the world in our hands, for good or ill. You know, as an aficionado of history myself, I have to agree with him. Um, he's not wrong. I mean, this is something that, yes, was it terrible? Was it an atrocity? Yes. Should it be forgotten? Absolutely not. No way. Mostly because of the fact that, you know, the age-old proverb, those who don't learn from their history will be forced to repeat it. So, it's better off just remember, I mean, you don't have to deify them like he's kind of doing. You know, this, this is the wrong approach. You You don't make them into a spectacle you but you still talk about them but you make it absolutely clear that this is not something we are you know we're, we're, we're not putting these guys on a pedestal i'll just be tending the museum if you need me but yeah we're not putting these guys on a pedestal like he's doing that that, that that's the wrong approach that's not what you want but you do want people to know about this and never forget the fact that these psychos almost destroyed the entire world. Did you have any questions about the museum? Or would you rather talk business? A little history first. After the Oblivion Crisis, a number of groups cropped up dedicated to wiping out the remnants of the Mythic Dawn. One of these groups found Merun's Razor, the artifact of Dagon. They split it into three fragments and pledged to keep them apart forever. That was almost 150 years ago, and the pieces are still being kept by the descendants of that group. And they're right here, in Skyrim. Ah, oh, you don't say. At least two of the owners, Gonzal and Draskua, are dangerous marauders. And the third owner, Jorgen, I only know he lives in Morthal. Here are my notes about them. I'll gladly pay you for getting the pieces any way you can. No questions asked. Okay. The razor is Merun's Dagon's personal artifact. It has always heralded bloody change and carnage. It's held many names. Dagger of the Final Wounds, Bane of the Righteous, the Kingslayer. The Mythic Dawn worshipped Dagon as a god. Having his razor would be invaluable to my collection. Good luck finding the fragments. Okay, so, um, just to make this clear, I am not going to kill Silas at the end of this quest line. Um, I already did. What the hell are you doing, woman? 
<sighs> whatever. Anyway, but yes, but I'm not going to kill Silas. Uh, mostly just because of the fact that, well, I don't want the razor. Uh, it'll just be kind of, uh, yeah, it'll, <laughs> it'll just be taking up inventory space. There's, there's no point for me to have it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, if you do want to watch me actually get the razor, then uh, you can watch my other playthrough. Uh, but, uh, for this one, uh, I'm not gonna kill him. Alright, so, we'll head to Morthal first, because this is actually stupidly easy. This is the easiest one. As long as a freaking dragon doesn't drop on my head again! <sighs> Seriously. Those damn dragons. <laughs> they don't know when to piss off. Oh, well. Anyway. What is it? Hmm. Now, there are some quests you can do here in Morthal also. Uh, one that specifically deals with a vampire. Well, two, actually. The mill is my responsibility, and that's what I care about. That's all. Understand? I just want to be left alone to do my job, and to enjoy what little free time I have when I have it. Don't know what you're talking about, stranger. I've heard of him. My father had suspicions about his connection to the mythic Don. Guess they were true. I don't need this. My family wasted eight generations keeping that razor safe from a dead cult. As far as I care, I can stay locked in my house. So, you can either choose to, um... So, yeah, so you can persuade him, you can uh, try to intimidate him, you can just pay him gold, or you can just go in there and steal it yourself, whatever is your fancy. Uh, but this is why it's so comically easy to get this razor. Divines know Demil could use some new blades. All right. It's yours. Here's the keys. It's locked in the chest inside my house. Good day. It's so bright out here. I don't know how you stand it. Okay, so all we do is just go inside. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so... The next places won't be as easy. <laughs> um, so, you can, um... What do you call it? So, in my, plas in my last playthrough, I didn't do this. I just delivered them all at once. Uh, this time, however, I am going to just go back and deliver them each at a time. Because he does have a specific bit of dialogue for every single piece. Um, but if you just deliver them at once, then he's not gonna, he's not gonna give you that dialogue. You've come to Dawnstar at a strange time, friend. Seems everyone in the town is having nightmares. Heh, <laughs> I went the wrong way. Eh. She'll catch up to me eventually. Or get teleported in. Whichever or. or. Yeah, see? What is it? Do you have one of the razor fragments? Did you try the grip? Isn't it eerie how it seems to mold itself into your hand? Here's your gold. We just need the pommel and the shards of the blade now. I'll just be tending the museum if you need me. Okay. So, let's see. The next one takes me... Let's see. There's... Uh, one of them is over here by the rift, if I recall. Nope, sorry. No, it's uh, over here. Yeah, so we got that one... And then 
Uh, the worst of them all. Uh, we'll be saving that one for last. Not because it's hard to get to per se, it's just in Forsworn territory, and I hate the Forsworn with a passion. Alright, so... Yeah, I think this is probably the closest. Alright. Alright, so, um... Alright. So, uh, I'm just gonna end it here for now, and then in the next episode, we'll head off over there to, um, get the other, um, the other fragment. Uh, but until that time, though, this is MegaWizard79 bidding you all adieu.